guys do love me, huh? Oh, hey, John, how's it going, my friend? I'm pretty good. You got uh, Julian here, my baby. Yeah, he's so cute, <laughs> little baby bobcat. Uh, are you going to get another Julian shampoo here? Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> oh, that is so yeah. funny. Oh, yes. My Julian, he's such a lover. Yeah, he's. I think you are such a lovable good guy. He's so he just cute. To, and he's not using his claws. He's just yeah. hugging and hugging and hugging. And, and he's like a little motor going with his little part. <laughs> it sounds like a motorboat. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now we get a little bit That's a lot of hair there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> hey. How old is Julian now? Oh, oh my God! What is he? About six months? A little over six, six months, months old? Like, I don't know exactly. He's growing fast, like a weed. Yeah. yeah. What do you think he weighs oh, now? Oh, but he just loves oh, attention. He loves yeah. it. He loves you. All yeah. the cats love you. Oh, You're yeah. the daddy o. <laughs> oh. Okay. So education-wise, the bobcat is an American lynx. Also known as the Red Lynx. Yes, the Red Lynx. I don't know why I call you Red Lynx. You don't look very red to me. You guys are really <laughs> dark and gray. How old do they get yeah. to be? Yeah. They can live uh, in their mid to late teens, oh, you know, really? possibly 20. But, uh, yeah, the smaller, they're, they're about the, you know, cats, uh, the <laughs> wild cats are pretty similar to the domestic cats in, in age. Now, that's captivity, you know, because oh, okay. uh, in captivity, animals live longer because they have a comfortable life yeah. a lot of people don't realize that or appreciate that you know we just like oh everything should be free um you know and you know maybe maybe not but uh, there are perks to being a captive cat i mean they live longer yes. um for the same reasons we do the life is comfortable they have what they need they get medical attention if they need it um they're not miserable. They they get a they get a lot of love and attention. They they can be very well adjusted. And as you can see, he loves. And it's not just me. Everybody that comes in here with him, he acts the same way. You've been in here a few times. Yeah. That's why. Oh he's yeah, saying. he's like. Yeah, it's like that little motor boat that he has, like, has that <laughs> see, purring, that see, loud can purring. Yeah. Can, can you purr for us, Julian? He wants to give you a shampoo. Yeah, that is so funny. Excited, yeah. He wants to play. He's so cute. Yeah, he, hey, Julian. He was purring up a storm He's when so he soft, first got too. in Just amazing how soft yeah. he is. Yeah, you can see how, you know, people would have wanted it in a coat because it is that furry. Yeah. I mean, these days it's not a very popular thing. Um, but uh, when you feel, when, if you're able to ever feel the texture of an animal like this, you do get the, you do get the whole idea that mm -hmm. somebody desires it. It's uh, just unfortunate that, you know... <laughs> Right. They have to take it off the animal to, yeah. to, to enjoy There's it. There's no way to... You should be able to just be able to enjoy <laughs> it with a live animal. Um, <laughs> Anything that smells like you, I think, yeah. is he's yeah. in love with it. Yeah. yeah. Well, they all, every cat I've ever had has a fascination with the hat, and that's actually how I retire them when, I, when I'm done with them. <laughs> Uh, it's usually because they have too many teeth marks and you know, rips. <laughs> oh, out. okay. Oh, that's not the same hat you had when I met you like 12 well, years no, ago? No, 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 it's not. No, I go, I, I buy a new one I, like every three or four years um, because they all but they all have teeth marks in them and they get ripped apart. You know, and this is how because they, um, and again, he's, he's loving it to death because it's mine, right? The same thing happens hey. with my boots. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> Yeah, you should auction yeah, those my things. Boots, yeah, my boots you should are, auction yeah. those things off, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they prob well, probably get the highest bids from the cats themselves. <laughs> there you go. Well, it's kind of their way of uh, communicating with each yeah, other. They yeah. smell each other. Yeah. And, and then for enrichment, we always do things oh, yeah. like this, things that move yeah, that dude. they can play with. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh. Unknown. Unknown, yep. Yeah. Oh, 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 what are you doing? Have you oh, thought about extending your car warranty? Yeah, something like that, probably. <laughs> Look at him. So what's yeah. going on out here? What are some of the things you got? Little exciting things. I mean, I know we're working on trying to get some new enclosures. Yeah, here. yeah, yeah. Well, the whole thing is, um, like I stated <laughs> Sunday, we um, we ran into a little snafu with FWC. We've been trying to um, do things with our um, band species, so we're actually going to let that go. Um, we've kind of taken a few steps back and look at it, uh, the expense that's going to go into it when um, we need to do so many other things. Um, however, they are giving us the opportunity to place them in good homes, so oh, okay. we're still able to save their lives. Um, so that's what, I, at the end of the day, what we really care about is saving them. Um, 
you know, um, and maybe in the future, who knows, um, you know, uh, but they, uh, they will go to a facility that will educate with them. Um, it's, and it's really, really great because they are good examples of, of, of what the problem is, but also um, good examples of why the problems exist. So, um, so a lot of people, you know, you know, what I would like people to understand is that these animals, a lot of times, can be very, very powerful tools uh, for mm-hmm. education. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so we're 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 when it comes to that, we're just trying to place the animals. Obviously, we got Julian's enclosure done. We still have a few more things that we want them to be able to him to be able to have to play with. We have the swing on the ground there that we still have to, or the hammock on the ground that we still want to Spend raise for the ceiling. Make sure everybody. Um, there's some jumps John. and things that we want to put in still that will go in soon. Um, but yeah, um, the next project I think is uh, we, we have to finish our mini barn and we have to um, remodel the second half of the uh, the lion and tiger cage. So that's going to be a lot of concrete and um, a lot of um, steel work. So a lot of man hours. Yeah, yeah, a lot of man hours. Who does that? Yeah, uh, you, volunteers. Get, yeah, whenever yeah. I get volunteers, uh, 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 me, a lot of times uh, Kyle, who's here uh, on property that helps out. Um, a lot of times, you know, we get so busy with maintenance, it's hard to go forward sometimes. So we need more help to do the maintenance things a lot of times. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> yeah, this. yeah, he's this just guy he's been, he's been, the whole time yeah. we've been talking, he's been down here licking my feet yeah, and climbing yeah, up my shorts. Above. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, um, you know the, the the care, the safety, the the um, the welfare of the animals always comes first. So Amen. whenever we do have projects, sometimes they'll sit just because we don't have enough manpower to cover everything. You know, <laughs> so that extra help is very very essential. You know, look at you, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Likes, so everybody th- this is this that. this is actually what makes all that work worth it. You Amen, know? man. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The love that you get from the animals, and uh, and the thing is, you know, you've been around here, so you notice it. That's one of the first things that people say when they're when they come and visit is when I walk around, the animals are all watching me. Yep. And this is why, because I care for them and I and I raise them. Um, you become a constant part of their world. So there's actually a relationship that uh, a lot of people don't realize exists between the keepers or the, 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 the people that um, <laughs> that take care of the animals and He's the animals them themselves, you know. So, you're, you know, basically I've known him since I picked him up at the airport. He was just a few weeks old. And uh, the people that have been raising him, he's uh, in DC's he all the time. He's just in love with. Come here. Yeah. Come on back up here, bud. Come on. Come on, Julian. Up. Come on, come on up. He's thinking about it. <gasps> you thinking about it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a cutie. You are such a cutie. Yeah. Yeah. But so, yeah, there's a lot of people don't realize the relationship that's actually built, and um, you know, and that's um, it's very similar to any other pet that you might have. Um, you know, they uh, the bond. And that's what makes it all worth it. They return the love in, in that form of affection. <laughs> so, like, oh, let's go, buddy. So yeah. there's always, there's three things you always need out here. Three things, yeah. Money, number money, one. Money, money. Money is money, always, you know, one. money makes the world go around, whether you like it or not, <laughs> uh, even a in a nonprofit truth. business. It's uh, how we survive, no matter what you get into. Um, unfortunately, that's uh, the necessary yeah. evil. Um, money, help. Um, volunteers. We, we need help, volunteer volunteers. help, uh, materials and stuff like that. Um, skilled help, too. Yeah, like skilled help, too. Constru- yeah, construction. I mean, you know, most of what we do is in construction. That's one of the things I'm grateful for. I mean, I, I actually, I was in the construction industry. I'm, uh, I was an electrician for 30 years, um, you know, so I've learned to build. And when you're in construction, you pick up the other trades. So I know a little bit of everything. Um, you know, so that's been helpful. But whenever I get other people that are in the same type of uh you know, boat and they yep. can help build yep. things, you know, because most of it's just, I mean, you know, if you weren't, if you didn't have the skills you have, this place wouldn't be. Here. Oh, no, well, no, I mean, it wouldn't be. People don't realize you know, what you um, do out yeah, here. Yeah, with the volunteer help, you know, um, you know, and, and a lot of it was created in the early years with help from probation department. Um, we mm-hmm. had the sheriff's department uh, would bring a work crew out on the weekends, you know, um, and, uh, 
So we don't do too much of that anymore, but we had, you know, we, we constantly get people from the probation department. And, um, I actually had a conversation with that about somebody yesterday where they, where they like, um, and it's interesting form of rehabilitation. It's the idea when you have the minor offenses, like, you know, most of the people we get are just DUI or driving offenses, uh, habitual offenders. We get a couple of shoplifters every once in a while, or like most of it's just like possession, you know, marijuana possession or whatever. So the these aren't hardened criminals, um, right. you know, but at the end of the day, you know, the experience they get here or the or what they go away with is just as um, is just as good because they go away feeling good that they helped something or, or help be part of an answer. Well, I mean, it is like therapy. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is, is therapy. like therapy. And, is therapy. and I tell you what, you would be amazed how many uh, people that I that are have been here for a long time that actually started out in the probation department. <laughs> we, we, don't, we don't tell people about we it. We don't tell people about right. it because we don't want to embarrass them. But we, right. we do have several individuals here that started out. Right. Doing, pro, doing community service hours because they got into trouble. And uh, some of my best, best people co- come from that. You know, people make mistakes. and mm-hmm. uh, But, um, but yeah, no. I And that, and you you say therapy. You know, um, we do a lot of therapy work. Uh, you know, I every couple of months um, or every month or so, I'm actually now visiting a place called um, uh, the Benita... Uh, uh, what is it called? The... Uh, uh, but is basic, it a retirement? Yeah, plan? no, like no. A, it's actually for for people with stress problems. Oh, you really? Know? Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a basically a place that was built for uh, people that deal with high stress in their lives and, and wow. things like that. So there's a lot of like meditation, massage. So therapy do you take animals something. with you? you? Yeah, yeah, because animals are considered therapy. They they Amen. they are very soothing to people. And luckily, we have some that are so well behaved and so interactive what that, are some you know, like when you do outside uh, events what are some of the animals well that we, you know, we of course we have Bubba the alligator that everybody oh, yeah, knows and they're, they're getting to know him even better which is, is it's amazing the the amount of the therapy work that he can do too um, you know there, there are a lot of stories that surround him including uh, an autistic child saying his first words after meeting Bubba That's amazing. Um, and we catch a lot of flack for it because he is a big alligator he's 11 feet long and um, and people that don't understand will criticize it to the end um and we want people to understand Bubba is not normal. He's not, the, you he's know, not what you normally alligator. say. He's not your typical <laughs> alligator. So this is, you know, when we do stuff like this, it's not because we're idiots. It's because, you know, we found something special that actually works very well. Um, you know, so, but, uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Julian, Julian, wherever, wherever he, he went, is. Julian's over, he's over resting in his little he's house. He's out. Yeah, he's got his little leopard skin blanket, you know. Um, you know. But, yeah, he's great for therapy, too. I mean, who wouldn't feel better <laughs> after getting the big loves and hugs who that wouldn't? this guy gives, you know. And he's so soft. Um you know, so, um, you know, even the reptiles, you know, a lot of people just love being able to uh, hold a bearded dragon, um, and they don't realize how interactive they can be. Um, I had a little four-year-old girl spend two hours crawling around the floor with a with a tortoise, the tortoise that we have wow. that is interactive uh, because he was a very well-kept pet. Um you know, and a, and a lot of people, it blows their minds. It's like, what do you mean a tortoise? They're dumb. They don't have a <laughs> brain. Nope. Yeah, but you know what? Your brain doesn't have to be very big to, to, to basically have the basic emotions, the yep. basic um, interaction skills that that are required to, to, to build a relationship. So, yes, even a tortoise can build a relationship with other household pets, their owners and everything. And they're even capable of play. You know, go you look at YouTube. There's the proof is all <laughs> over there. You know, you can, you'll see tortoises on the floor playing ball with another animal in the house, you know. Um, they're, so, they're always a huge hit with the kids out here. Yeah. I mean, the kids just love touching them. Just Yeah, them. yeah, I mean, yeah, just... and feeling. And, and that's one of the secrets of, or wonderful things about Kawaii is the interaction between the animals and the children and um you know and and you know we always warn them you know everything with a mouth can bite so you know you don't stick your finger in their face that's the best way to not do it Uh, but the animals aren't aggressive you know they're not looking to bite you and and because they're used to people they're not um, they're not going to react negatively. Um, and that's one of the things that we, we do focus on a lot here is the psychology of the animals. I mean, generally, negative behavior comes from fear. And when animals are, are treated well and taken care of well and you've spent a lot of time with them, they are very <coughs> they become very interactive. So and that's great for therapy. It really is. Uh, not just for kids, but um, like we say, for uh, 
you know, just mental health and mental wellness in general for normal people, mm-hmm. you know, with high stress levels. Um, you know, uh, senior citizens, I, you know, regularly visits, uh, you know, um, retirement homes, um, you know, uh, for functioning and non-functioning. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just a good, good thing. Um, I've, 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 uh, there's a regular, uh, there's a Alzheimer facility that I go to regular, um, you know, not, I don't want to be insensitive by saying it, but it's like every time we show up, it's, it's like we were there for the first time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But so, yeah. Uh, still so I thing. don't even really have to change anything. Um, <laughs> but the, but they get something out of it every time. You know, so they're, cool. they're fascinated by the animals, and um, and a lot of times that's just that's just a little bit some people need to be happy or make a difference mm-hmm. in their life is just to have something different happen that day. Um, you know, so uh, with children, you know, yeah, children especially. You know, uh, we I've, I've done things with special needs uh, children, um, high functioning and low functioning. I, I had a bunch of kids out here with. Uh, Somebody said I shouldn't say it that way, but that, I mean, I didn't know how well right. I was to say crash Sorry. helmets on, right. you know, they, because they literally would hurt right. themselves. Um, but uh, but you know, when they're around the animals and they're able to interact with them, you know, all their problems and stress goes away. And you'll instead of seeing a kid banging their head up against the wall, you see them giggling, shoving carrots <laughs> into a pig's mouth. You know, so um, so yeah, That's therapy, awesome. animal therapy works, and it's and it's very mm-hmm. good, and it's always been a very very important part of what I do. Uh, and I, I, I want to say probably one of the most satisfying things that I've ever done throughout the years, and I've been doing it for years. I once had two blind boys uh, show up. They wow. were 10 years old. Uh, both of them were blind. Uh, their mother lived down the street, and, or grandmother lived down the street. And um, I, I was able to bring them around and uh, show them animals, and they were able to touch them. You know, wow. And that's not – you know, you think about that for a 10-year-old. How many places can you take them where they can have this that's kind amazing. of an interaction right. – with the with its sense of touch because they can't see, um, and at the time it was really neat because at the time I had an ostrich. Um, oh my gosh. Squishy, yeah. The squishy was about seven foot tall, but she was <laughs> a doll. She was a sweetheart. If you go in our archives on our Facebook page, you can actually really? see pictures squishy. with her. Um, but uh, but they were able to touch her and feel her and wow. feel her long neck. And uh, the comment that they made was like so cute because they, they said it feels like a dinosaur with the long neck and huh. everything. And, and it makes I a lot of sense that. because yep. when you go, if you study dinosaurs, they say they actually were birds first, you know. So um, that's amazing. But, uh, but yeah, I have story, lots of stories like that and visions like that in, 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 the, uh, in the area of special needs and, and therapy work. Um, and, it, and it's one of the more satisfying things that I do because, um, you know, bottom line is there's just not a lot of it available to them to begin with. So right. it means so much oh, more is, to them. I don't know where so, else he can go here yeah, to have an experience yeah, like you get here. Yeah. Where's that little rascal? Yeah, at? he's over there on the other side. So but, uh, there was three things. We talked about two. We talk about money being important. Yeah. Volunteers, we need volunteers. Yeah. All the help we can get out here. Yeah. No matter what, if you yeah. just want to help sweep up, whatever yeah. you can do. Yeah, yeah. Materials, um, building materials. You know what? I, I, uh, you know, you, you know, in two thousand eight, when the, when the, like uh, the housing market crashed and some mm-hmm. people lost their home, there was one guy that um, he had uh, a boneyard in his backyard. He was in the the masonry business. He had like a lot of keystone and uh-huh. stuff, just odd stuff that he collected over the years, big pieces of tile and stuff. And I was able to do a lot with it. He just called me up and said, "Hey, I'm I'm getting rid of my house. I, I don't want to take this stuff with me. I'm going to have to rent somewhere." So he he gave it all to us. So, wow. so a lot of times, you know. Um, you know, somebody called me up and said, I'm, I'm remodeling my my driveway in my yard. He lived up on the beach, and, and I spent five weeks just picking up bricks to bring him wow. here so I can re- relay Stuff them. is so expensive, so, though. Yeah, man. so expensive, and it just, you know, for me, it's just a little work. And unfortunately, I mean, I had to spend my own time to do it, but it was worth it. But even a lot of times when you have people that can go and get stuff for you, mm-hmm. that's helpful to be able to so go get stuff. Get a truck or yeah, a yeah, bigger, not, a big truck would yeah, be nice, a big yeah, truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I have a trailer, old beat up trailer that I use. Mm-hmm. But even like people that can, you know, say, "Hey, I've got, I've got this pile of." I had another person just do that. I have a pile of lumber I've been collecting in my garage for years, and I need to get rid of it, or I want to clean up. So, yeah, we can use it. We'll find uses for it. You know, um, bricks, uh, concrete blocks. You may, I mean, everything that we need to build stuff with yeah. is a lot build, of times just building sit, materials sitting in people's backyards. You know. Yeah. 
cleaning so, materials too. I mean, yeah, you go through oh, yeah, those, cleaning like materials. Oh yeah, style. yeah. We try to be very, very clean, uh, and that's what you know. I tell you, it's one of the biggest compliments we get here with the amount of animals here. Is like people like sometimes they like they just look up at me and they get this wonder wonder look on their way. I'll be like. It's like, it doesn't smell here. How do you do that? How do you have so many animals and not have the smell that you normally right. smell? And so, well, because we clean, we clean a lot. And, um, and uh, of course, so that's what we need. We need bleach. We need paper towels, garbage bags, you know, to keep everything clean. Um, and that's a lot of times when we go to schools, that's what the kids do. They bring us gifts, you know, nice. from home. They'll nice. bring us some garbage bags and bleach and paper towels. Um you know, we get hand soap donated. Uh, I tell you what, with the with COVID going <laughs> oh, on, gosh, and then, yeah. it like keeps going back and forth. Like Whole Foods gave me like uh, like sixteen cases. Oh of, my like, lord! Gallon jugs of uh, hand sanitizer. Wow. So I don't need any right now, Thank but you, but yeah, ge- generally those are the kinds of things that we would have. Um, and that's that like that we need. Yeah. I mean, uh, see, I would. I would when I first started coming out here. I thought food was a big issue. Out yeah, there. no, no. With but the meat for are... the cats, we generally got that covered. Occasionally, we might run into a situation where we're a little short, but we do have other avenues to go. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, like I said, we cooperate with the other um, nonprofits in the area, the bird gardens. Uh, I share. Uh, she shares her food with me for my birds, yep. so I get it. We from just her. saw that. The last yeah, time we saw that when we did that. You know, Sunday we're going to Shy Wolf, and uh, they're actually going to be helping us out with some chicken that we need because we're a little short this month um, nice. you know so so we help each other out whenever we can and realistically their source for chicken actually originates with big cat habitat who we saw oh, about really? a month ago yeah nice. they're, they're part, they, you know so there is a networking system yep. that goes on and that's one of the reasons i wanted to start the interview series is because I not only want people to see, you know, what we're doing or or help get the word out about what our missions are individually and what we really stand for, mm-hmm. but I also want to see people people to see that we do work together and we are trying to help each other. Uh, but by the same token, we all need your help. You know, um, we, we we need the public's Amen. help and support. And, it, and it's a lot of forms. I mean, you know, you could you can help with volunteering. You can help with money if you have the money. You can help with. Uh, you know, coming out and helping build stuff, uh, cleaning out your garage and giving us stuff that, you know, building materials. Um, but even on social media, if you just follow us on social media That's and it. share the content. That's where it starts, right? Yeah. It's sh- simple so it's just, sharing this video. Yeah, right sharing now, this video this, right share, here. Be, and share, you know what I always share, tell share. people is like, even with GoFundMe's, occasionally we put a GoFundMe out there mm-hmm. and I'll say, share it. Because you know what? Even if you don't have the money to give, if you share it and that person shares it and they right. share it, it might end up in the hands of somebody that can. You got that right. You know, it'll end up reaching somebody that has the money. And a lot of times they're even looking for somebody to donate That's to for a good cause. Because, um, you know, let's face it, a lot, these days everybody's skeptical and they're, they're, they're starting yep. not to trust the nonprofits that are out there for several different reasons. So that's another yeah. goal. I have is I want you to see what's going on, see what these people are doing. I'm encouraging people to donate local and find out about the people that they're supporting and what they're doing so you can believe in what you're doing it too and believe that your money is going to you, a good I cause. I mean, this Kawhi Chobi so, is yeah. legitimate, folks. It's yeah. a 501 501- 501c3, that C3, means tax C3, deductions, too. Yep. Um, yep. You know, a lot of people can't use it. I mean, let's face it, a lot of us that are working stiffs, you know, yeah. we, we only make, we get back as much or more than we put in, yep. you know, so we're in that situation. But there are people, business people that yep. make money. Businesses, they need the, Yeah, they need the tax deduction. And you know what? You know, at least here you get to see it doing good and doing something. If you end up giving and just let the government take it, you know they're going to waste half of it right off the bat. <laughs> yep. Right off the bat, they're going to they're going to waste it on a study before they even do <laughs> there you anything. Go. You know? Yeah, yeah. The feasibility. Yeah, let, let, let's make spend, a, let's make spend two million dollars to figure out how to spend a hundred thousand. You know, it's just like yeah. Right. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah. so, All right. All right. So one last we'll, thing. We'll end it one there last thing. We get people, people always want to know yeah. what they need to do to come out and see. This. This place uh, you need to call yeah we we are not open to the public uh, we do have a mission um, that uh, requires us to schedule things around what we do which is education uh, and we are involved with schools libraries boys and girl scouts summer camps year-round uh, we've done pro- programs with the children's museum at galisano so if you want to come out and visit we will tell you we'll tell you all the stuff that we do how we do it you'll see all the animals it'll be an educational experience we are not the zoo we 
We're not a place to go and just say, hey, I want to look at animals and feed some horses. No, I'm going to teach you about everything that we do here and, to, and, and, and help you understand why we exist here. Um, so call uh, 239-352-5387. That is the phone number for the preserves. Uh, if you don't get an answer, try calling back. I mean, I, this is my home, so message. we're not always Facebook. at the... Uh, message yeah. on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Facebook. Facebook. Message yeah. on Facebook. We have all our volunteers are fielding these now. So go on Facebook, messages on Facebook, Messenger, um, you know, I, WhatsApp, if you can get a hold of somebody on WhatsApp. We're on, like, all yeah. over social media. So however you can get a hold of us online, um, our... our uh, our website, kawaiachobi.org, actually feeds right into our email. So um, I, I, I answer Perfect. the emails daily now, and uh, I've actually set up several tours through the email as well. So, um, and it's also how to follow us. You know, remember yeah. Rob's doing a video here. We're trying to put a lot of content on social media, um, starting to put things on Instagram as well as. Uh, you know, TikTok, uh, you know, something know called like, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I'm learning, you know, they're, t you know, are you going to be singing I'm, and I'm, being forced, I'm being forced to learn how to TikTok <laughs> yeah, and, I think and you gotta, like, and you like, how to yeah. dance and sing if you're on TikTok. Yeah, yeah. And, and I haven't even, I haven't even gotten to Snapchat, whatever oh, that is yet. But there's I'm, probably yeah, a new one around the corner. But what, you know, the, the whole idea is whatever. Whatever we can use Whatever to get the word out, Whatever's we're going to do there. that. Amen. So one more, to, you know, one more thing. I just want to go over what what the agenda is right now. We really are trying to go into social media and get the word out through social media, yeah. and a lot of people are are having a problem understanding what I mean. And what I mean is that social media, the internet, is the one thing that cannot be controlled by the government. And my whole my only point is let's stop the let's stop waiting for the government to do something. Let's stop putting that huge footprint in Copenhagen every year that's not doing anything. Yep. It's not, we're not solving the problem. You know what's going to solve the problem? You. You, you right. me, every individual. That's why I teach the kids now. Change starts with them. They are the most important part of conservation. We are the problem, so we're the only ones capable of being the answer. So this message has to go out and reach the people, not the governments, not, not, not the organizations. It needs to reach the people. And how do you do that? Through social media, because it's not controlled by anybody. It's its own world. It's well, its own to universe. A well, to a degree. But let, let me put it this way. The perfect example is as much as they want to and as much as it bothers them, they have not been able to control Bitcoin. Yep. Well, that's that's tearing them up. But, yeah. That's it's, they can't, up. yeah it's, yep. it, 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 Do you it, guys take Bitcoin? You know, they hate it. Well, I'll take anything. They, you want to <laughs> send me. So uh, check, whatever. Um, but we don't, <laughs> But that's my example is that they yeah. can't control Bitcoin. You, you think they're going to control conservation if we all jump on board and try to push that initiative. Let's, let's, let's do what they are not wow. able to do. It starts with the individual. Amen. Okay. Let's see. Let's, where's Julian? <laughs> Julian's yeah. out there asleep. Julian. Look at the Come here. We want to see you before we leave, bud. Julian, you go. Oh, you, you're the thing. Hey, Julian, he sunk out over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, need something to play with. Hey, buddy. Yeah, come say goodbye too, to everybody. Yeah, he's a little tired. Come here. Julian, you going to come say goodbye? Yeah. Uh, okay. He said, you guys wore me out with my love. <laughs> he says, it's not easy to love as much as I love. Hey. It gets a little tiring. <laughs> all right, John. <laughs> Thanks, my friend. All right. Thank you. Thank you all, everybody watching. And thank you for your support.